If you want to learn to make your own clay extruder for less than $10, stick around. What's up everybody, my name is Jim and welcome back to the studio. So you want a clay extruder, but maybe you don't have the money or the expertise to make your own large scale clay extruder. I recommend making your own this way. I figure if you're already watching this video in the first place, you can probably figure this out. So let's jump right into it. PVC pipe. This is an inch and a half. Is it outer diameter or inner diameter? Hmm. One and a half inch inner diameter PVC pipe. One and a half inch inner diameter PVC cap. And the cheapest caulk gun that I could find. So for the piping, the cap, and the caulk gun, that'll run you $6.11. I think that math is right. I just kind of did it on the sheet down here. Double check me on that. The length of this pipe will give you three tubes for extruding anyway, and so you might want to get three caps. And that will bring you to $8.39 for the two foot tube, three caps, and the caulk gun. So maybe you're wondering, maybe you're asking yourself, well, do I need an extruder? And the answer is no, but do you want an extruder? And hopefully the answer is yes. With an extruder, you can make perfect coils if you have a circular die like this one. You can do tessellation patterns on the cap, you can do smaller coils, you can do extrusions for handles. The limit really is whatever you want to try out with this. It's also really fun to use. This will open up possibilities for your work. And you won't know what those are unless you give it a try. It's a great tool to have. Anyway, moving on. A seven and a quarter inch pipe plus the cap is about as much as you can fit into the general caulk gun. So you'll need a way to cut down the pipe. The store might cut it for you if you ask nicely and if you smile and if you say please. If not, I recommend a hacksaw, Use a coping saw, maybe a table saw, maybe a seesaw, just kidding. <laughs> but you'll need a way to cut the pipe down. Tape measure. Recommend marking on multiple areas. Mark, rotate, mark, rotate, mark. That'll give you the best measurement. Kind of measure and roll. It's okay if it's not precise. Close enough is good. The last little bit is tricky. Just be firm. Make sure you keep this gap open as you cut or it'll stop your saw. Now you can see there's all these little burrs. Your finger can get most of them, but this is where either sandpaper or a utility knife works really well. Let's cut the next one. Trick photography is so cool. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I've never used a coping saw to cut this. I'm trying it now for the first time, and it's actually a little bit easier. And this is a lot cheaper to buy than a hacksaw. All three are finished, and so now let's make some design caps. Because you can get three tubes out of that two foot pipe, you might as well buy three caps so you can have three designs for your extruder. I use a drill and some drill bits to get a hole in the cap, and then I use a coping saw. You can use a jeweler saw too to kind of fine tune my edges. If it's just a circle like this one, the drill bit will be fine for you. The last thing I recommend is having a file. Maybe you have this from high school sculpture, which I do. That can help you kind of uh, sand down the edges of what you cut with the saw. You can use some sandpaper too. If you have it, roll up into a tube and you can sand the inside with a tube of sandpaper. For all of these, you're gonna wanna drill, a drill bit, a piece of wood to protect whatever you're drilling into, and your cap. This is a half inch drill bit. Be very careful and do this slowly. It might grab at you at the last moment, so be careful. Sometimes drilling in reverse and pressing into it actually works. This is reverse. That reduces the bite. If you go slower, it's pretty clean. Yikes, let's clean this up. And lastly, Take a file or a piece of sandpaper and just kind of sand down the edges. The smoother this opening is, the smoother your extrusions will be. Now for a cap that isn't round, start out with a small hole. Here's a quarter inch drill bit. Same as last time, we're gonna skip ahead. I don't have a triangular shape, so I'm gonna make a triangle for this one. Yeah, I like that. So to get the saw off, you have to squeeze these sides together. And that will allow you to unhook the blade from over here. 
which you can do by pressing either like against a table edge or onto a table like this. There you go, I just press to bend this a little bit, blade comes off. Take the blade, and you're gonna saw like this upright, so thread the blade through the hole that you made and restring your blade. Press down. Again, if that's hard to do, you can take this and kind of like, imagine this is a tabletop, you can press it against the tabletop with your whole body. That will allow you to bend this. Always saw upright. Don't angle your saw in. Saw upright and let the blade guide you through. Same thing as jewelry if you're a jeweler. What I'll do is I'll normally cut to the edge two different ways, so it gives me space to turn my blade around. Here we go. Now I have some more space. When you're turning your blade, just like in metal, you're not really pushing forward. You kind of almost saw up and down in place while you turn your blade. Otherwise, your blade will bind against the plastic. Lastly, press down, remove your blade, and there's your cap. You clean it up a little bit. One thing to keep in mind, you are limited to the opening on the caulk gun here by this metal flange. So you can see that this die still fits. I want to make one more that I actually am really interested in, and that's a hound's tooth cap. So let's try it. Now this is a tessellation, meaning it will stack never ending like this pattern. Normally you'd want to take a print off of this and maybe stick it to the top. I'm going to wing it. What do you think? Will that work? It still fits. Let's do it. When you bring your saw blade back, kind of go up and down in place and move it through where you cut. Yeah, there we go. I'm surprised it was as easy as it was. I'm gonna file this down and see how clean I can make it. Remember, press down. It should pop right out. This gets hot, so be careful. So is it perfect? No. Am I really excited about this? Yes. Okay, let's test out this extruder. Now what I have is red, orange, and yellow clay. It's been dyed with 8% red, 8% orange, 8% yellow mason stain per weight. I'm gonna cut thin slices of these and layer them, and then put that into the extruder. Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna put the cap on. Put the clay in, make sure the clay fits. If it's too big, you may have to stretch it out by dropping it along the table or forming it with your hands. You push this button to release the mechanism. Oh my gosh, look at that, that's amazing. So red, orange, and yellow clay on diagonal with this hound's tooth. Since it's a tessellation, I should be able to cut this and stack it next to itself. Let's try it. Hmm, not bad. That would probably work. Imagine two different designs smushed together hound's tooth style. This isn't pretty, it's not perfect, it's not pristine but it works and you have the added value of doing it yourself. Question for you, what kind of designs do you wanna see with these extruder caps? Let me know in the comments. That's everything. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new here, consider subscribing because I have new things coming out most of the time, not every week. And that's it. My name is Jim and I will see you in the next video.